Hi, I'm James from the Shooters Resource Channel. Today we're going to be looking at reloading for precision. Now this is the first video in that series where we're going to look at all the brass preparations before resizing your precision rifle cartridge. Now I've been reloading for more than 15 years and I've learned a lot along the way. Almost all of the ammunition you've seen on this channel has been reloaded, including both pistol and rifle. But before we get started, go ahead and take a second. Hit that like and subscribe button, support the channel. Now there's more to reloading than just saving money. You can actually get better precision and that's one of the reasons why I reload. When I think of reloading, the very first category of work is preparing the brass for resizing. And this is especially important for rifle brass. The first step in preparing to resize is sorting your brass. When it comes to rifle brass, you could really do this after the brass is clean. It's really up to you. But when it comes to pistol brass, 9, 40, and 45 stick together. So unless you want to be pulling them apart and having water or dry media trapped in them from the cleaning process, it's best to go ahead and separate before cleaning. And this also gives you an opportunity to perform a quality inspection to make sure that there are no defective cases that you're about to reload. So you'll be looking for cracks, dents that won't be repaired in the reloading process, and just some brass that can't be saved. Now step two is a step that I only do for rifle cartridges. Pistol brass, I don't worry about when I clean it or resize it. But if I'm going to wet clean my rifle brass, which I do for any of my range pickup brass and every so often on my bolt action cartridges, then I want to make sure that I'm depriming the same day as I clean or that I'm depriming prior to cleaning. The reason why it's important to deprime cartridges prior to cleaning is number one, it exposes the primer pocket so you can get any type of cleaning out of the way there if you care about that I really don't worry about it but one thing that happened has happened to me with wet tumbling is the primer actually gets welded into the primer pocket and that happens on a small percentage so I don't worry about it for pistols but for rifle brass it's too expensive and too hard to find to be wasting brass with primer stuck in them so I use a lead decapping die to go ahead and pull those primers out of the brass prior to the cleaning process. I would recommend picking up some extra pins because you're going to break some of those pins on the decapping dies no matter which brand you go with. Always have some readily available. All right, step three is wash and clean. And I always wash and clean my brass before resizing taking care of my dyes and I'm not introducing dirt in the process. I shoot a lot at outdoor ranges, so there's a lot of dirt and debris that gets caught up on the interior and exterior of my cases. It's important to get those out before you run them through your dyes. Now the two major methods that most people use is wet and dry cleaning. I've used dry for years using media tumblers and they work just fine. My dry tumbler broke on me. So I went out and got a Frankfurt Arsenal wet tumbler. I really like this tumbler. The only advice I would give is to make sure you do it outdoors because it does leak a little bit. It's not so much a problem that leads to it not cleaning, but you don't want to get this stuff inside of your house. My secret recipe for cleaning. I get a common question all the time. People approach me and they say, Jay, what's the secret? 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 This plan for selling the secret family recipe is almost perfect. Uh oh. Lemon shine and blue dawn. No real measured amounts, just a little uh, a little lemon shine and blue dawn, and you know, completely filling that tub full of hot water. I'm not gonna say that hot water makes a huge difference. I just always feel hot water cleans better, so that's what I use. I'm sure that it would work just as well uh, running uh, hose water in there because I'm running this thing for one and a half to three hours, so it's not like the water stays warm all the whole time. So that brings us to step four, 
in our process, which is drying the brass after you clean it. You can see the brass there is just beautiful. It's got a great shine to it. I'm going to run them through a hand tumbler or media separator, also from Frankfurt Arsenal, just to get out the bulk of the water. Uh, this works out really good. It's going to get a lot of that water outside that's inside of the casing. And uh, it doesn't take very long. This is about a 45 second, 30 second process. I'm just going to tumble them, make sure we get everything out. After that, I'm going to use a towel to dry the brass even further. This is going to get all the moisture off the outside of the brass. It's going to give a chance for any extra moisture on the inside of the brass to work itself free. I use a small $20 convection oven that I got from Walmart, set it at 150 degrees, and run it for 30 minutes. Now if in 30 minutes the brass is still not dry, I just take a little flashlight, look inside of some of the brass, look at the primer pockets, still not dry, then I mix it up and put it in there for a second cycle. Because we're only heating it up to 150 degrees, again, it's just evaporating the water. I have the door lid uh, open while that's happening, and that allows for any of that moisture to escape. But it's not going to mess with the brass at all. Uh, the brass actually has an anneal temperature range from 600 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So 150, just evaporating the water. You can see there the brass looks excellent. Looks like brand new brass. So next, we're going to go to step five, which is annealing. So the piece of equipment that I'm using here to anneal is annealese. And I actually reached out to them after doing some research on different annealers available because I thought that they had a great product, probably the most efficient annealer on the market at pretty much the lowest price point uh, that I could find for any quality annealers out there. And the owner and inventor of Annealies was nice enough to send an annealer out to the channel. It's their Gen 3 model, works really great. So look forward to a full review on this annealer in the future. Now let's look at the metallurgical side of the annealing process and why it's important to anneal your brass. So I want to give some credit here. This video was first put up by Moodle Mech and it's an actual uploading of a 1973 engineering craft studies by BCC called Properties in Grain Structure. I, I stumbled across this video because I recently got into a job where understanding metallurgy was required. So to start out, all metals are made up of what they call grains, and the grain structure of each type of metal is slightly different. Now when we work brass or any metal, that grain structure has changed. In this example, they're using aluminum to show how working metal changes the grain structure. As they work the metal, the grains become longer and much thinner. Now that changes the performance properties of the metal. Through annealing, we're able to get the properties back to where they were. Apply heat at the right temperatures, which is 600 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit for brass, and reestablish those crystal sizes back to their original state, giving the brass the same properties as it had before we ever sized it to begin with. A lot of folks worry about over annealing brass or heating it up too much. Bison Ballistics did some great work in collecting information on why annealing is important and what work hardening means as well as how annealing temperatures impact brass. While annealing can recrystallize and correct the grain structure, adding back ductility, there is a diminishing return and the brass will actually only lose so much strength. So while 600 to 800 degrees is the ideal temperature to anneal brass, don't worry about overheating the neck so much other than the fact that you don't want the heat to travel down the length of the cartridge and soften the base.
There are a few different ways to check temperatures. One popular way is to use temple lac. Temple lac is a liquid that you can paint onto brass that will dry and then reliquify at a certain temperature. If you were to use temple lac, you don't use it every time, but it's to get your initial setup on whatever equipment you're using. If we remember, brass anneals in between 600 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So the ideal temperature for temple lac that you would want is probably 700 degrees. However, when uh, I went shopping to buy this temple lac many years ago, they didn't have the 700 degrees in stock from where I got it, so I got the 750. I've seen other people use 650. All of that will work. Uh, probably 650 or 700 would be ideal. Now the main thing we want to make sure that is not happening is, is we don't want to heat the brass so much that the heat travels down to the base of the brass. Because when you're firing a cartridge, that base of the brass needs to remain hard because it's taking on the majority of the pressure. One way to make sure is to take temple lac and paint it down the side of the cartridge. And then you can run it in your setup and make sure that the temple lac is not liquefying further down the brass. A lot of folks will tell you that you can tell by color or by heat signature or flame color whether the brass is being overheated or not. But that's probably not the most scientific way to go about it and it's counting on a lot of observation. Uh, through this method it's a little bit more straightforward and uh, you'll be able to tell if you're overheating. Now when you're reloading brass, you're going to notice that it starts becoming harder to work with by about the third or fourth time that you go to resize it. And that's because it requires annealing. If you're able to get a mechanical annealer like the one from Annealies, there's no harm in annealing the brass every time that you've shot it. As a matter of fact, this will help ensure neck tension consistency on each round every time you reload. Now that we've got these rounds annealed, they're all ready to be resized. In video two, we'll learn how to resize brass, trim the length, as well as prepare the primer pockets to accept primers. In the third video, we'll cover primer installation, powder charges, as well as seating our projectiles and crimping. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please take a second to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thank you all and God bless.